This is Club Chronicles, Design Stories from the Arab World. My name is Yasmin Nashabi Tahan, and I have with me today Egyptian comic artist and graphic designer Muhammad Shinnawi, better known as Shinnawi. Shinnawi is born in Cairo in 1978. As a teenager, he developed a passion for comics. He began his career drawing for Alaa al-Din magazine in Cairo. His short comics, Rue de Batterie, was nominated in 2009 in Angoulême International Comics Festival for Young Talents category. In 2009, he gathered a collective of artists to launch Tok Tok, a comics journal about the daily life in Cairo. Tok Tok's goal was to overcome social taboos and openly address socio-political issues in Egypt without fear. A few years later, Shinnawi, together with his peers, launched Nabiyam uh, Awa, or Ninth Art, uh, we're going to ask Shinnawi in a minute, another publication to promote and expand comics about the Arab world. Hi, Shinnawi. Hi, Yasmin. How are you? I'm trying. How are you? So it's Nabiyam Awa? Yeah, since it was in, uh, in, in Egypt, so it was actually the Ninth Art, and uh, in Arabic, it's uh, Fanat Desa. And Fanat Desa in Arabic, and Ninth yes. Art in, well, Ninth Art. So, yeah, so I don't know, maybe the last time I saw you was at the Arab Comics Art Symposium at the Lebanese American University in Beirut, was it? Or I, I can't remember. Yes. We invited you to present um, I that think... time. Uh, we wanted you to share your experience with the launching Tok Tok uh, to the graphic design students and the practitioners in Beirut. Exactly. Yes, I remember very well. And and, and believe it or not, uh, I meet uh, sometimes some uh, students at the time and he told me yeah you we were in your um, uh, lecture in the symposium like maybe i don't know now you were the six star years ago. you were the star of the yeah, symposium I, I, in beirut Chimbawi. don't be hungry. i mean no I, I mean you know I, it was it was very i mean it was a very good experience like um yeah. exchanging with other artists and everything but you know when you speak about your work you don't really feel that people were listening that with yeah. this attention but the sort of yeah you say yeah you will speak about lights and everything and drawing the daily life in Cairo so it's it's a really it marked my uh, my memory yeah and now I'm thinking Tok Tok is this uh, comic uh, journal that came out a few years before the uprising it uh, it came out it was launched in 2009 the uprising in Egypt uh, started in 2011. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about, you know, the launching and how, you know, I mean, how the 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 situation in Egypt somehow uh, influenced the content of the the journey. Uh, it was actually launched uh, launched in two thousand eleven. We started working on it from uh, two thousand nine uh, when I met when I met my uh, friends who are the co-founders. They were uh, oh. Uh, Almost all of them, they were um, uh, cartoon, cartoon, uh, cartoonists in the uh, Jordans, daily Jordans in Egypt. And they were drawing already comics, uh, um, comics or maybe more ca- uh, cartoons, political cartoons in uh, Jordans. So we, we were, um, I met them and I felt that uh, the style, our styles uh, together will be, can go together very well to make uh, this publication that I dream of making it. Since uh, since I went to Angola, uh, actually, for this uh, play, uh, for this exhibition, and uh, so we 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 have been working like two years during two years on the first issue, and then we decided to launch it because we have been working a lot and uh, we couldn't really know if we what we have for the moment shall we uh, publish this and see what the reaction of the audience you know, so it was published. Officially uh, in 10 January 2011, so two weeks before the uprising in in, in Egypt. So the the content, do you think it it changed after the uprising, after the situation? How is it? You know, how did the situation or the context somehow shape the the content of the the comics magazine? Um, yes, of course it, it did uh, change, but I mean. Let me just first uh, tell you what we have done in the first issue. We we we, we decided to make it. We wanted to to make uh, this publication for adults, 
like, uh, you know, comic strips, comic strips, not for children mainly. And, and we actually wrote on the cover, uh, an Arabic, uh, phrase like top for the and with the of the like keep, keep away from the reach of children, <laughs> like the phrase on the mid, uh, on the uh, medical medicine. Uh, thing, yeah. medicines, you know, in, in the first issue, actually, we, we just told stories about like the stories that we wanted to, to tell my stories that I, I I've made, it was mainly like, uh, remarks from the street. You know, we were all living this group. We were living all, uh, in the surrounding the downtown and going out always on the, on this, uh, district. And this is, it's a very, it's a really a portion of the Egyptian, uh, real Egyptian life. You know, you have, you have all the, the sides in the street, good sides and bad sides, you know. So Peter, the, a popular uh, kind of life. It's, um, yeah, it's, it, that's the thing. It has a popular, um, uh, small districts like this, at the same time, more cafe, uh, coffee shops and more open-minded also, you know, from the traditions and everything, uh, traditional cafes and everything. So we decided actually to, to tell stories from this, uh, context, you know, from this, uh, and we've, so I, uh, so that was the first issue. And then we, we only printed 500 copies and the launch was in, uh, in a and a gallery, like a independent, independent gallery in, in downtown, a gallery townhouse, maybe townhouse, you know the name. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, so all this, uh, all these, uh, things, you know, made actually the impression of the magazine. You know what I mean? I, I think if the magazine was launched normally in the, uh, Jordan, in the kiosk or the, you know, the street vendors of, of, uh, newspapers. I think it wouldn't have done the same impression it has done in, uh, in this gallery. And we played at uh, the time, very big, uh, comic, comic pages, you know, like 200, uh, or maybe, uh, sorry, 200, uh, three meters height in this gallery, because it's a, it's a, it's a hunger, you know, like a workshop. So it, it permitted us to, to has this freedom of make a very big, uh, print. So, so the, way the 500 to present the magazine as an artistic project. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was not, yeah. this is the approach that we wanted actually to, to do it. It's independent, independent uh, publication, you know, and, um, it has this artistic, uh, project and it's also related to downtown community. That's all was also a little bit, uh, it was important for us, you know. So the 500, 500 copies were, were sold out in, during the launch for during two hours or something. And, and then we thought we had a lot of feedback that people were saying, yeah, you have done this publication. We, there was nothing, uh, um, similar since, uh, the nineties. I don't know if you know Flash, the publication called Flash in Egypt of was course. also known yes. in the we had it world. In Beirut. Yes, because it was very well distributed. This With stickers. Whole, uh, it the, had stickers. Ex exactly. Uh, <laughs> so everyone was telling us, yeah, you, we haven't read something similar since then. And you are doing this something in a historical thing and everything. And we thought, yeah, that's very good. We have to continue. But then two weeks later, it was the uprising. And uh, since we were uh, in downtown, so very close to the uh, Tahrir Square. And of course, after all the um, situations and all these uh, experiences that we had during the uh, two, first two or three weeks of the uprising, the revolution, we wanted to to uh, to tell all those all these stories in the second issue, and it it was actually it was the it was the, the what we wanted. Almost all the story was telling what we have done. Sometimes it was told also by, uh, you know, a little bit of like fiction, not exactly journalistic, uh, comics, you know, or journalistic way of uh, telling the story. And also since we launched the first, uh, first issue, we had more contributions from uh, other artists, even one who was one of the biggest artists we have, we still have Migro. He sent us from uh, California by the time he was living, he was living in California, US. And he sent us uh, this, uh, his story. It was not, it was not related at all at, to the revolution or anything, but it, 
it went very well with the combination we wanted. And so the next, the second issue uh, came out, I think in February or March, by 1st of March uh, in 2011. Um, so since then, we have issued, we have 16 issue. It's not a very big uh, publication. It has like uh, between 60 to uh, yeah, 50, 60 pages of uh, comic strips. And also the content, content helped a little bit. Sometimes I was do doing a, a music page, like it's introducing a, an artist, a singer, or a music group that I like or one of us like. And it's not very commercial, not very known to the Egyptian audience. So I was making this so a portfait of the artist of the group and small biography with a link and everything. Because also we have to, uh, if you want to know how Tuk Tuk actually started by the time in 2009, 2011, the underground uh, scene in Cairo, downtown or Cairo, Cairo was very uh, important. There was a lot of uh, music groups, a lot of uh, ga uh, independent, independent galleries. Uh, you know, the movement was very uh, important and very, uh, how do you say, it, it was a big scene actually. But there were, there were a lot of uh, collaborations, you know, artists and singers and groups coming from Beirut to Cairo and vice versa, between Cairo, Amman, uh, Tunisia, you know, uh, Beirut. So Tuk Tuk actually came out in during this uh, this period. Of course, the revolution and uprising, you know, turned the focus of the world from uh, independent or underground scene to the revolution and its uh, activities and uh, everything. But that was the the context where Tuk Tuk was born, actually. Yeah, so this is Tuk Tuk. What about the, the Ninth Art? When did you start the Ninth so, Art? So actually, the Ninth Art was the the official. It's a it's a an entity. It, so it, we after we launched the first uh, issue, uh, we we were looking to have more. Uh, we were looking actually to have a how to say sponsors, you know, that we can continue uh, printing and production. Uh, so we had I had to. Uh, so I I was the leader of the group. So I had to create. An entity, you know, with officially official papers and everything, uh, located in in Egypt, in Cairo, and I called it the Ninth Art, Al Fadl Desa, which is the comic strips. And since then, so when we started, actually, when we had the first uh, sponsorship, it was the European Union, I guess. By the time, uh, I thought to have uh, this publication that it's called also the Ninth Art. It was the same logo of the company at the same time, you know, of the entity. Uh, so it was, the name was actually the, this official publishing house, if you want, behind Tuk Tuk and this publication of the Ninth Art. We thought that we already built, uh, it was, it was launched one year after Tuk Tuk. So after four issues of Tuk Tuk and one year later, we felt that we had, uh, we had a feedback. So, um. So many, uh, even Arab countries, you know, from Beirut, we have met uh, and been invited in Beirut or other uh, cities like Algeria and Tunisia. And we said that we have, we have to have like a, some kind of platform. We ha I created this, uh, newspaper. It was like a, in the form of a newspaper, very, very, it, it had 16 pages. So it had news and uh, news from the Arab world of the new publications, new, you know, artists and everything. Also, articles, critic, uh, critical or presenting artists and publications or uh, comic books uh, from the Arab world and the world. We call that. It was uh, even written on the, on the cover. I think we had uh, seven issues of this, uh, of this uh, publication. And then when the, the fund that the sponsorship ended, uh, I thought it, it, maybe we don't really, we have, we have to focus more on Tuk Tuk than uh, this uh, publication. So it stopped, unfortunately. And then we continued the Tuk Tuk uh, until the 16th issue. So Tuk Tuk, I know it comes out in Arabic. Was it there? Did you have any intention to, uh, to translate it? And it, tell me more about the, the distribution. So where is it distributed mainly only in the Arab region or does it, uh, 
Is it also, uh, does it reach other countries? Uh, you know, can you get the subscription? Yeah. So it was, it was in Arabic, of course, Tuk Tuk. Uh, it's still in Arabic and even Egyptian dialects. So it's not like classic Arabic. And, um, so, yes, of course. And this limits a little bit, uh, readership. you know, the reach, reachability. Yeah, exactly. And readership. Uh, but at oh. the same time, the distribution of these uh, publications, uh, independent publications, this is what we have learned later. You know, it's, it's a very, very difficult. Even uh, within Egypt, we couldn't uh, reach all the cities, you know, where we had need, uh, leaders, like in other cities, maybe in the south or even in like Sardinia, which is not very far from Cairo. Um, you know, it's a process, it's a, uh, a job actually. And we found ourselves, me, <laughs> I found myself actually doing more, uh, like a lot of uh, paperwork and, uh, you know, physical work to go for the distribution and then collecting the, the extra copies that have been sold, haven't been sold, the money, everything. It took me a lot of time uh, and effort than actually working on my work, you know, doing comics. So the distribution finding it was not very successful and it was not, it was not professional actually. Um, but we kept, we kept, uh, our, uh, how do you say, uh, our readers who really wanted the, to reach the, the magazine, they were sometimes ordering from uh, bookshops, you know, and they just received it by mail or something like that. Uh, we tried to make it available also in electronic. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, like an e magazine on the yeah. website. So is it, uh, is it available so online? It, it is available, yeah, on the website, all the copies, all the um, 16 uh, uh, issues oh. and also the translation you said, uh, 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 what I, I was, I, I lived in Belgium in Brussels for seven years and I want to, I, I participated in a lot of, uh, festivals, you know, I was invited and it's mainly French speaking uh, festivals or oh, has a lot of stands, you know, with, with a French, uh, publication. It's a, it's the biggest market in, in the, in Europe of, of comic strength. So I actually worked on a translation in uh, French of, uh, we have, we made a selection. I worked with a friend of me. She's a French uh, Tunisian, so she can speak both languages very, very good. And also she lived in Egypt for, uh, for a while. So she knows the three, you know, three um, cultures, three languages. Yeah. And, uh, we worked on this translation, uh, of selection, like the selection of the best, best stories were published during the 10 years. Uh, this book were, came out in 2019, I guess. And, uh, so, uh, and so, yeah, I, I was setting this in the, in the festivals, you know, where, in a, whenever I have a stand to sell or just, just distributed very, um, like a uh, very, very low uh, number of copies in, uh, for example, Institut de Mondarin. You know, the yeah. uh, uh, country institute in Paris and, and Wasser is also in certain, uh, some, uh, bookshops, known bookshops. Uh, so that this is how it was distributed. And also when I was in Belgium, I was trying to make, make it available by, by, uh, by mail, you know, you can order it within Europe or sometimes also in US and I was sending it this to, you can order it from the site website. It was, this is, was this, that was the distribution. It was a very, very uh, strong distribution. And I think that was the point of, uh, weakness of the publication, not only Tuk Tuk, but it, it's also the, how do you say the, the, the thing that marks the, most of the publications, this kind of publications in the Arab world. Yeah. Distribution is a, is an issue. I, I yeah. hear you. Um, I see in the background, you've recently moved to Barbados. Are you certain? How is it yeah. like? <laughs> what are you up to? What to uh, like, how are you dealing with all these publications and, you know, working uh, remotely or are you working with the publishers, um, local publishers or, you know, did you so, your career with yeah, you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
I mean, uh, I have already moved my career from Cairo to Belgium uh, in 2015 or 14, 15, yes. And then we, I stayed there for seven years. And then uh, with my family, with my wife and children, we have to, we had to move to the Vegas for her work. Um, at the, anyways, I was working remotely since very long time, you know, and, uh, and I was, of course, from Belgium, I was trying to go to Cairo twice, uh, twice a year, you know, to something to, to keep up my publications of the night art, um, updated and, uh, you know, the distribution also in Cairo or Egypt and uh, took it took 10 times, I mean, to, you know, to follow up the projects in Cairo and, uh, in Egypt, uh, so from here, it's a bit, uh, it's a, it's a more, it's more challenging, you know, it's a, it's a more, it's a far, uh, like a double or uh, double triple of the distance than Europe. Uh, but I, I keep working, working the same, the same way, actually still have my relations and my work and my data and my uh, network in, in, in Egypt. And I go every year for the festival. Uh, kind of comics, which maybe we'll talk about this later, and also for the publications of the ninth art. So, if you if you if I if you allow me, I'll just uh, tell you what the ninth art became now. So, I to, I decided actually to uh, focus more on publishing. The ninth art were were doing also sometimes like uh, events, you know, like uh, uh, what we call in French uh, concert de ciné. Uh, drawing concerts, yes, uh, you know, events some of the, like this uh, kind in, in Cairo. And then I thought it, it would be better to focus on uh, publishing. So, uh, oh, wait, since, so uh, concert de ciné, maybe you can tell us more about it. So, uh, drawing concerts, so basically, yes. someone is thinking or speaking, and you know, an illustrator is illustrating and it's uh, projected on the screen. Like exactly. Yes. yes, it's a, it's yes. a show. It's a yes. show actually on a sta on a stage. Uh, it started in France. Uh, in France, I guess, a few years ago, and then it was you know everyone was doing it around the world. We have made in one of the uh, Tuk Tuk uh, uh, launching uh, launching events. We have done one of these uh, drawing concerts. So it was there was a group. It was called the Like Jelly, and the three artists they they do. Uh, during the concert, we also, uh, it was at the French Institute in Cairo and, uh, we made it like a free entrance and we, 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 and we were surprised by the number of, uh, attendants, you know, so we had to divide the, uh, the show into two parts. So can everyone can enter actually, well, uh, attend the show. Yeah. It's very popular. Uh, I went to one of those events in Beirut. I like yes, the interactive, because... this interaction between, you know, the person who's singing or performing and, you know, this other person who's illustrating as a performance in a way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, the, the concept of the, the drawing concept because you, you can like the music a lot. You normally can go for the, uh, your preferred group or singer. And then when it's uh, the drawings are somehow related to the music, you know, any kind of relation, it hasn't, doesn't have to be uh, telling exactly the same story. So, I, because mainly when you listen to music, you have this kind of imagination in your, in your head. And then when you see it, and maybe sometimes it's uh, the same idea that you have. I don't know. It's a, it's a kind of, uh, yes, play with the feel, the whole experience you know, of music and visual uh, life drawing. That's the concept. And it's, a, it's all a successful action. Um, so the right art was, was the, uh, uh, organizing these kind of events in Egypt mainly, and also the festival. And I, I was, uh, I thought that I have to, to focus on the publishing. So since, uh, five years now, almost or three years, four years, we, that I thought about it publish, publishing, uh, two books per year, one translated book, you know, from another language and one like original book. Uh, Arabic, uh, Egyptian or Arabic uh, artist. This is what uh, what it it, it, uh, it is about now. That I thought. Yeah, I really, really, I can't wait to hear about your last book, the fingerprint one. But maybe before that, maybe we should talk a bit about Cairo Comics. 
So I just learned that you are the, well, you are one of the founders, but that you are now the director of Cairo Comics, a festival that takes place yearly in Cairo. It's been seven years. So my bro, for the, you know, for directing it. And I heard yeah, from Mina Raibe that you were there in November. So yeah, maybe you can tell us a bit about Cairo Comics. That could be great. So Cairo Comics, actually, it started in uh, 2015. The first, uh, uh, first edition. Of course, we were working with my, uh, with my colleagues, uh, before maybe we met two years before the first, uh, first edition. And then we have worked a lot on the content and, um, I had already the, the name, the logo, you know, the, all the visual, uh, materials, uh, uh, almost ready. So we, we worked a lot uh, on the content, you know, the, uh, and, uh, the guests, the exhibition and everything. And we, we had the first, uh, edition in 2015. So the idea actually was, uh, the same, the same concept to have a platform where all these uh, artists uh, and emerging uh, publications, publications and artists can meet in a one place. All our meetings, it was all within Europe or Europe or, uh, uh, U.S. I mean, the Arab artists, you know, the theme of the last uh, 10 years who has been in the theme of the last 10 years. Uh, so it was the, for the first time it was in, in Egypt, you know, all these, uh, Arab artists gathered in a, in a festival, which had, uh, uh by the time it was uh, maybe two exhibitions, you know, and also the, the idea of the, uh, we selected every year, one of the characters, complex films characters that have been published or were published in, uh, during the, the last uh, decades, you know, uh, for example, uh, the first uh, edition, it was uh, the Hanul by, uh, it was published in the uh, Samir magazine and then in Majid, you know, the magazine. So every year we had this, uh, character and it was very good because, um, the new generation, actually some, some of them, you know, can relate or can know these, uh, characters, but, um, uh, a, a new generation, a whole new generation had no idea about the existence of these, uh, knowings and artists and, uh, characters uh, that have been published during the 50s, 60s, you know in Egypt, Beirut and everything, and, and also in Emirates and in Magic. So all these factors are, are, the, are, are the reason why we have created the K Comics since, uh, uh, 2000, I think 19 or 18, we moved the, from uh, a place in, uh, in Cairo, the venue where Cairo Comics were, uh, were made to a more open place in, uh, in, uh, Almost in the opera in downtown each time. And then the, the festival talk from so this edition, it was the fourth edition, I guess. Uh, the festival talk really the, the image or the, yeah, the image that I really have in, in my mind, you know, we have also the comic souk, we call it, uh, it's, um, you know, like stands for the publishers and the editors to sell their publications. And also a very important uh, part is the uh, NDA square where the independent, uh, publishers, independent, sorry, uh, artists can, uh, show and sell their work, uh, besides three exhibitions, uh, every year, an exhibition of, or one of the heritage of, uh, the comic strips, you know, uh, then, uh, and, uh, a guest, uh, exhibition, uh, from Europe or some, uh, from, uh, you know, you know, from, uh, and not Arabic uh, artists and uh, an exhibition for Arabic, Arab artists as well. Uh, so we had, for example, uh, last year we had, uh, uh, 2020, 21, I'm sorry. We had the uh, Bahij Jarubi, for example, uh, an exhibition oh. from Beirut. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, we had before that, we had not design for my man. So it's, uh, it's, it's also an opportunity, you know, for the, for the audience in the Egypt to promote themselves. And also with the artists, who did you, know, you have in 2022 in November? Who did you have? Uh, in 22, there were three exhibitions. So one was, was, uh, an artist, uh, he's an, he was an Algerian artist, uh, living in Egypt. 
uh, what did he, uh, he was called? Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, oh. Yes, he used to draw a uh, penguin, penguin, and uh, I don't know the name in English of this uh, bird. Uh, no, that's. So this exhibition and the exhibition for the Belgian artist, always called Max de Radigues, and the Arab, uh, the Arabic artist was uh, uh, Saif, Saif Din Dashi from Tunis, Tunis. Uh, because he, he, he just, he had just, uh, he had a book, published a book, uh, one year ago or something. So it was an exhibition for this book, uh, Shabir al about the year, one, 1984. Uh, so this is, this somehow, this is somehow the construction of the festival. And then we have, uh, uh conferences here, you know, like talks, open talks on the, on the stage and also workshops with uh, invited artists and artists from um, the kind also. So during three days, it's a, it's a festival, you know, I don't have to explain what yeah. festival is, but it's really something very, very important. And, uh, for example, the, the, the ambition of this, the, of this festival, uh, maybe the second edition we had visitors from, uh, the, it's called Postiti de la Bombe City in Angoulême. So, Comic strips, a city. It's like a center for comic strips, has the uh, exhibitions and, you know, funds and everything. It's very important. To, uh, I think it's also one of the partners in the festival of Angoulême in France. Uh, so we had the director and, uh, I think, uh, the, uh, the art director, the historian art director at the time, uh, uh guest uh, visitors in the, in, uh, in the festival in Egypt. And so they, they were impressed by the scene, actually, you know, of the Arabic comic strips. They had no idea of the existence of all this work and, you know, very contemporary, very um, variety of styles and everything. Uh, so, so this was that a was collaboration the, between Angoulême uh, and the Cairo uh, comics? It was not yet the collaboration. They just visited the festival Aye. and they saw and during the festival in Cairo, these uh, amount of artists, you know, and artwork. And the collaboration actually was after uh, one year or two years after they decided with the, uh, uh, for example, Lina Agnes here was there. So with the, with the, um, the Waters and Rada Sawa, you know, the initiative of Rada and Waters Sawa for the Arabic comic strips. Uh, so they decided to make an exhibition in Ungulem for the Arabic comic uh, scene. The new generation of comics for So this will be world. happening next year? No, no, this happened already in 2018. I see, I see. Um, but I mean, it was, it was born, the idea was born almost in kind of the comics, you know, when they visit, visited the festival. So this is, I mean, this uh, shows the importance of this, uh, you know, this kind of uh, events also. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, these events uh, are really important to promote the artists and promote their work in the region. And yes, definitely inviting, uh, you know, organizers of other events uh, to know and to learn about what's happening in the Arab world is very important today. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to your book. So The Fingerprint, what, what is the title of this book? So Where the title the character uh, is... The title in Arabic is called, it's even Egyptian. It's called Fish Watashbiyah. Uh, it's, uh, it's the Egyptian, uh, name for, uh, I'm not sure if I know the name in English of this. It, in French, it's called the Casier Juridique. Uh, so the name sure in, uh... in, so, yeah, exactly. It's the Sahifat al Hanan Jedair. Maybe you have the name in, in Lebanon, the same name, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you have to do this with the great fingerprints just to, uh, to prove that you don't have any records or anything. Yeah, it's a criminal record. Somehow like a criminal record? No, I don't know. Yes, a criminal record that to make sure I that guess. your criminal record, you have nothing. You're, it's clean. <laughs> yeah, it's clean, basically. So exactly. you do it by you know. proving it with your fingerprint. So the character in your book is the actual fingerprint. But then it also speaks about um, immigration and travel and struggling to get a visa, you know, there's this whole, whole 
uh, yeah. uh, story of identity politics and bureaucracy. Yes. And there's a, a, a very a predominant uh, presence of the Egyptian eagle. So maybe you can tell us more about, you know, the motif and what that means and, you know, and how maybe your life is somehow projected uh, or reflected in, in your work. Yeah. For, or yeah, not, that's, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, no, for sure it is, because that, this is how actually I was inspired, you know. So since it's, uh, it's the beef goods and the name is Fish with Ashbi, actually, it's the name of two characters. So I named Fish as one of the characters, which is the, uh, if we, maybe later we can see an image or something. So Fish is the, one of the characters, which has the, the kernel, uh, vine, vine, uh, kernel, and then the other one, Tashbi, or is, uh, blue. Uh, and so the, I created this, uh, world, you know, the world of bureaucracy, signs and letters and all these things that you have to do to just achieve, to have a passport, you know, have a visa, anything. And, uh, actually it's, it's something, uh, this is also something I want to show in the book here. It's so finally I decided to make a story. I, I, uh, published a uh, few pages of the story or the first, uh, first chapter in Tuk Tuk. So it was like 10 pages or something. And then I thought maybe I can, I had the, like a, the sequel of the story, you know, a bigger, uh, more events and more things to happen for these two characters. So I actually worked on the, still I worked on the whole, uh, the, uh, the sequel of the story. So it's like around 80 pages and it's all goes actually with very many, many uh, drawing, the, almost there's no drawing. I was just drawing the, you know, the eyes, the hands, the gestures of the fingerprints and all, all other items are graphic items. Like, uh, I used a lot of, uh, uh, stamps, postage, postage stamp, but and other fingerprints, uh, you know, signs and uh, letters and uh, graphical, graphic items that I, I, I want to search, uh, or from on the internet, I, or I even I was scanning some with my own documents, you know. So it's um, a silent book. It has no text. It's a silent. So it's a silent book. Actually, it has a story. It's a silent book. So I had to tell this story without words, and even only without graphic elements, you know. And so that this that was the challenge. Uh, and when I finished finished the book, actually, the, when I finished the book, I. I, I make a test, you know, I sent it to a few friends to see if it's clear or not. And I had a few, uh, feedback from my friends, you know, that some parts were not very clear or maybe they understand it because they are artists also, but, but, um, maybe a normal lecture, a normal reader, reader wouldn't understand, you know, so I had to rework some small details to make the story very, to be sure that the story are very clear. Uh, so, and since the fingerprints, actually it, it's, uh, the idea and the, even the graphic work, you know, it developed with the story itself. So they were, they were actually only two fingerprints in the story and then other, uh, I would say, uh, characters entered in the story. Um, of course the, the eagle, the different eagle, you know representing the Egyptian government, the same thing for the, the, the same Eagles for European, it was a German, but I, I used it like, used like the European uh, government, you know, because the, the prince, they were, the whole story, they are trying to go to Europe. And also some other details from other stamps, you know, that I used it like characters from, uh, like there's some guy, uh, like a smuggler, you know, they was trying to, uh, a smuggler, actually. And then play a, a stamps from Europe, you know, from France, from Germany, to represent characters from, uh, from Europe. So the whole, the whole story actually is about uh, this, uh, uh, trying to, it was not escape, but trying to leave the country with a good, uh, with good intention. But, the, and then, uh, the characters, they are facing, uh, human trafficking, you know, and, uh, uh, on Atleha, I don't remember the name, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, human trafficking and, 
Arm trafficking? You know, arm trafficking also. You know, all the bureaucracy, everything, the, the discrimi dis discrimination and uh, racism, you know, all these things are in the story, maybe yeah. not in a direct way, but the reader can feel it sometimes and can, yeah. can relate it uh, also to, to their lives. And finally, we find, I found during work at the Disney and during my life, like the, my personal life, that the bureaucracy, for example, and all these obstacles, maybe in not the same, it's not the same obstacles that we have in, in, in Egypt, for example, but it exists also in Europe and almost everywhere, you know, also this kind of uh, hypocrisy, double treating the same uh, issues, you know. Yeah, so this is actually borders what, are, yeah, looking into IBM. Yes, exactly. And it's all on paper. Exactly. And also, I, borders. Yeah, this and also uh, the, the citizens of themselves, you know, uh, the, the human being himself and the, trying to find his own, uh, this is what I wrote also in the, in the small uh, resume of the book, the, the human being and his, uh, his pursuit to, to, to find his own, his own situation, you know what I mean, in, in the society, but, uh, this, is the, this is also what the book is about. Is it published? Is it available? Is it online? Uh, I, so it's published, it's, it's not yet in electro, electronic, uh, in ebook, but it's published by the Night Art in Cairo last year. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's available in, in a physical book for all the maybe from Cairo Politan or some bookshop in, in Cairo. Okay. Great to know. Good to know. So, so now I'm going to ask you, what is the project you are most proud of? And what is the project that you most enjoyed working on? Uh, so this book actually is uh, my first, was my first book that I published after, uh, I mean, I've been working professionally, I don't know, 14 or 10 or 15, 14 years. And I've never made that book, you know, like a solo book. So this was my first book. I was really happy that I worked on it and, uh, you know, and finished the whole story. It was, it was. It's not like the same style that I'm, I'm known with, you know, but I, it's also, um, a script writing, very, very, um, a lot of work in the script writing and making, uh, things, you know, go together. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm really proud and happy uh, with this book. Yeah. And it's interesting that you speak about script writing and that it's your first book, but then it's a silent book. It's, it's sound like a very uh, powerful book because it's also a projection of, you know, your traveling, your, your, you know, immigration, you know, all these issues that it's, maybe it's personal, but at the same time, as you said, it is something that the world is living these days, you know, with, you know, mobility, uh, migration, you know, whatever, you know. It is exactly what the, what's this about, you know, what's the book yeah. about. So what is it about your work that you find most difficult? I think for me now, personally, it's just being uh, so far from my, uh, I mean, it's not, not just being far from my country. I can, I mean, you know, it's easy now for, to, to, to work remotely, but sometimes when you want really to, to relate or focus your work in the, in your home, hometown or home, you know, home. In my country, I have to be physically there, you know, that's the most uh, challenging, challenging thing. And also I think it's becoming uh, more and more difficult in Egypt these days to, to be independent, actually, you know, yeah. either on the, on the level of uh, comics, uh, publishing or, uh, or the festival, you know, organizing an event like this. I think everything is becoming more and more restricted, restricted, you know, for and the individuals to do about the restrictions. things like this. Did you, as did you face uh, any censorship issue or any direct restrictions of, you know? I, 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 frankly, I didn't, you know, I didn't, uh, myself, but I mean, my friends did and, uh, the whole situation is, you know, you feel, you feel it, you can feel it, but for now. 
we we actually we also in the in the festival festival for example uh, the venue is um, is a museum in in Cairo, the whole of the museum. So we, the festival take place take place in the in the uh, like a garden, you know, the court of this museum, and the exhibition hall, and everything. So it's a kind of it's actually a collaboration between the between Cairo Comics and the Ministry of Culture. This collaboration is really successful, and I'm really happy and proud of it. We are too, and we are appreciate a lot what we have done. We are we are doing you know, during the festival, the uh, the uh, guests and the exhibitions and everything. So it's actually two two ways of interest and uh, learning. You know, we are also entering in the in the details of the the ministry and the, the museum. You know, and challenge because. You know, sometimes we, we, uh, an individual entity or a smaller entity can get, uh, a, a fund or a sponsorship, you know, uh, but the, the same, doing the same thing for the, with a, the ministry, it's more complicated and it's more, maybe not complicated, but it takes more time and more, uh, uh, bureaucratic, you know, those procedures to achieve it. So through an uh, individual or a, a personal entity, private entity, it could be easier. So, and I find this interesting and uh, very successful until now. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, so why do you think uh, it is important to promote comics in the Arab world? Uh, I think that we, we had, um, even in Egypt or other countries around, you know, it, we had a, a big heritage and uh, now a big, uh, like a long, long uh, history of publishing already. And comic strips was a big part of this. Uh, in Europe, in Europe, for example, in US, they are, uh, how do you say, they lean on that, on their heritage in this, uh, in this industry. But also the, the, they encourage a lot the publishing uh, for the new generation and the new, the new artists, you know. And uh, during the last 10 years, what happened in Egypt and the region, I, the comic strip scene proved for the publishers that the uh, comic strip is a, as a material that uh, has the same importance as the novelist and uh, the books, novel books, you know. And this is actually what's happening now that our more uh, publishing houses are, are encouraged and, uh, and willing to invest more in the publishing comics for either, uh, uh, translated ones, ones or, or, you know, original, uh, comic books from art, uh, Arabic or Egyptian authors. Uh, so actually it's a work that we have done during a few years, maybe 10 years. And it's starting from, uh, uh, the, the 2020, 2020 or something. It's, we can see the difference, you know, 10 years ago and now during the festival, the number of books and publications uh, that are coming out, no. especially the independent uh, artists. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting that you're saying this now. I'm thinking, where do you see this all going in 10 or 20 years? You know, with all these festivals, with, you know, uh, future collaboration, potential collaborations, potential interest, uh, uh, more readers, uh, more publications, and maybe, I don't know, maybe moving into online publications that is maybe helping. I don't know. Tell us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but, uh, it's actually all the, all the media, you know, all the mediums available would be uh, a way to, to, uh, to uh, support this, uh, this uh, industry. It's, it's actually like the cinema, you know, in Egypt, I know that in Lebanon, also Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, the heritage and the, I would say the heritage, heritage yes, and the industry of cinema is very, it has been, and it is still big. I mean, comparing to, to the whole region, you know? Uh, so, and, and people also, all, uh, depend on this, on this, uh, on this heritage, uh, to promote new, new films and your, your, new work, you know, and then 
when you have a new, uh, new medium like the internet, YouTube, uh, you know, Facebook and all the social media, uh, uh, channel, channels like this. Uh, so you have, you have definitely to go, to go through this also, you know, so yeah, in the comics, for example, you have a more and more uh, applications that are publishing, uh, Arabic uh, comics like Kushk, for example, or uh, an application that are publishing the uh, Kushk comics in the coastal region. And also similar things uh, from uh, by Arabic um, investors, uh, maybe living living abroad in Europe or something like uh, someone was called uh, Rosomet as well. And you have the same things coming from uh, Saudi Arabia, translating translating uh, Korean manga in, into Arabic. Uh, and a lot of people also are uh, they are not very happy with translation, but I find it very important. You know, it's. Uh, it makes uh, it 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 opens the, a very big door also on the on the industry in another in the, another whole in a whole another place in a whole another continent continent, uh, and it helps a lot having original artwork uh, beside the natural selected ones. Actually, now we thank you so much. This was really I learned so much. We learned so much from all the interesting uh, stories that you just uh, told us and uh, about, you know, comics in the Arab region and your work and uh, where it is moving. Um, do you have any final words uh, or thoughts that you would like to add before you leave us? Uh, first, thank you so lot, uh, Yasmin, for this uh, interesting conversation. I also enjoyed it a lot. Uh, final words, I don't know if I just... Uh... Tell everyone to buy and read the Marvel comic, uh, and by actually by buying and reading this, the industry will flourish more and more, and you will find your uh, what you're looking for. Maybe if not right away, but in few years, uh, coming. Good luck for uh, <laughs> good luck for artists and me as well. And um, we 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 hope that we have more bigger and bigger. Uh, comics industry in the region. Definitely. Definitely. We're all going to uh, Kaigo Comics next year then. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. That's, uh, we we it's also, we, we love having everyone yes from around the, the, the Arab world, you know, that's the cool thing about last, last edition, there were artists are inviting themselves, you know, we didn't have, uh, uh, the, the, the means to invite everyone from the different countries, you know, uh, so people will actually say, yeah, we are coming our, on our own experiences and we just want to participate in the program and everything. So the program was really very rich, you know, with uh, more and more new editions and books from a totally different styles and uh, different, different uh, origins also, you know. Definitely, so, I think we definitely yeah, we should. It should plan ahead of time, maybe a group of students to, you know, with faculty, maybe from, you know, start with the here at NAU, Lebanese American University. I'm going to talk to Nina about this. Maybe we'll organize a visit and see. I mean, it all needs planning ahead of time and I'm willing to work on it. So yeah, we keep in touch. Yes, it would be great. Yes, of course. And, and invite other uh, designers, um, illustrators, practitioners, students to join. And so it will be in November, November next year. Um, yeah, it's, uh, so it's uh, always in November every year. Sometimes it changed the date, you know, it's during, um, depending on the weekend. Um, it will be in November. We didn't, uh, we will announce the exact dates uh, soon once where it's confirmed with the museum and the, the museum venue. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you.